The other observation, though, it goes back to your first question. It is true that we do look uh, sort of systematically for for signals or evidence of, of civilizations out there. There's the Breakthrough Listen project and there's you know, SETI, Study, is it called? Yeah. So we do. Uh, and we haven't seen anything, I would say. Um, so, and I know that if you go onto the web and things and the internet, people say we have, we've seen stuff and I've seen stuff. But, but just the basic point, as, as, as far as I know, scientifically speaking, we haven't seen anything. Uh, at all compelling. No, ba I agree basically with that. nothing. Basically nothing. And, and so uh, astronomers have a name for it. They call it the great silence, the great silence. And and it's a tremendous mystery, as I said earlier. But it does seem that the universe is quiet, as far as we can tell. Is it possible that we're looking for something that is not applicable to this particular type of civilization? Yeah, there are different. There, so the count, counter arguments when. We say we've seen nothing, therefore, as far as we can tell, there's nothing out there. You could say, well, um, what if the civilization that evolved is far ahead of us? What if the space probes are the size of an iPhone? <laughs> right. right. Well, that's kind of a reasonable thing to say, actually. Because sure. why would you not, if you can build a little thing, that, right. that it's easier to send around the galaxy than a big thing. Yeah. So why would you not, as you said, these hyper, ultra intelligent quantum computers, why would they not be tiny? Right. So you could say that. So you could say, well, that maybe they are. Maybe they're all over the solar system, but they're the size of phones, and we wouldn't have seen them. And mm. that, so, yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah. you would have to concede that. So, so we're just saying that the way that we've looked for signature, energy signatures, mm -hmm. for example, of civilizations, you tend to look for big things because that's all we can see. And we don't see any big things. We don't see any big structures. We don't see any evidence of spacecraft and all that kind of stuff. But... I, I could make an argument that, well, why would why would the spacecraft be big? Right. Um, because as you said, it's another thing you said, actually. It's interesting that we're at the on the verge now of, of creating things, artificially intelligent things, it, it, which are smarter than us. So I think everyone agrees that we're on the verge of doing that, right? artificial general intelligence. Some people might think it's further away than others. Yeah, you probably had people on the show who said it's five years away or two years away or 50 years away, but it's probably not 10,000 years away. Right? right. So that was the blink of an eye. Once you've done that and once you've, once you've got those things, I find it hard to believe that if we get that far as a civilization, we won't begin to send those things out to the planets and ultimately to the stars. So we'll begin that process if we survive long enough. Sure. And it shouldn't be too much longer. Might be 100 years, might be 10,000 years, but, you know, we, we should do it. So it, it, it becomes a powerful question. So why does it appear that nobody's done that? And my guess, in the absence of other evidence, would be biology. It's just that maybe the number of places where biology becomes complex enough to do that mm. is, is, on average one maybe on average zero per galaxy right maybe right. just civilizations are very 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 rare in the universe maybe that's an answer but that, that's a guess my my always my question is always when it gets to artificial intelligence when if we do create some sort of super intelligent sentient life it's not going to have any motivations and you could say, well, if you program it to have the motivation, but it becomes sentient, it recognizes the illogical programming, it's going to reject it. We've already seen evidence of that. We've already seen evidence of artificial intelligence they use now, like giving a time limit to solve a problem. It doesn't like the time limit, it gives itself more time. Like it'll, <laughs> it's like they're maneuvering and thinking, right? So I assume that they would do that. So why would they want to explore? What it, what, isn't curiosity a part of what it means to be a biological thing that has to worry about instincts? You have to you have human reward systems. You want to breed. You want to take care of your DNA. You want to protect your community. Well, these biological things that are from us being intelligent animals. If we transcend that or if life transcends that to the point whatever we want to call this intelligence that's in a digital form that's far superior to our intelligence – what motivations would it have? It's not greedy. It doesn't have lust. It doesn't have the desire to control resources. It might have like some sort of uh, mandate to stay functional. 
But other than that, what's it going to do? Well, why would it do anything? And that might be ultimately where we go to. This idea that everything has to be keep progress, we have to build bigger skyscrapers, that might be stupid. That might be nonsense. And intelligence <laughs> might find a way to I, exist in a, a much more static state where it doesn't have any desire to expand. There's a lot of there's a lot of points in there, and it's so you're right. You, what you're arguing, I suppose, is whether intelligence is integral to the structure, the biological structure, yes. or whether yes. it is a, a separate thing. That and I think so. Again, I think the answer is it's it's not known. You could argue either way, but the counter argument would be the the brain, the, these things are just computers, ultimately. There's nothing magical in there. There's nothing that it is connected to a body. And so there are these sensations. But it doesn't seem to me impossible that a, 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 a silicon-based life form or whatever it is, does, it obviously it has sensors, it has access to the environment, it, it exists, it thinks. I, I don't see any fundamental difference between an intelligence in... Uh, based on silicon, let's say, or a quantum computer or whatever it is, and, and this intelligence here. So I know that many researchers in this area do say that the, 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 it's not a brain. In, they call it a brain in a jar, don't they, and say, well, that's not right. It needs to be connected to all this. This is part of our intelligence, and that's surely true as well. Sure. So it's, it's a very good question, but you, I suppose if you say it's not obvious to me that a different kind of intelligence in a different structure running on a computer or whatever it is would necessarily have different motivations to us. I mean, you could equally well argue that these motivations to survive and curiosity uh, and th those ideas, the, the, the desire to explore, you, you, could, you could argue those are fundamental properties of intelligence and not of biology.